Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you for tuning in with me to another episode of The Right Now Word. I'm so excited that you all have turned on that television in this brand new year of 2019. I'm excited to see you all and thank you so much for your faithfulness to this show. Thank you so much for tuning in with us um, to hear what the Lord is speaking to his people in the year, the new year. The new birth year of 2019. I'm so excited about your vision. I'm excited about your goals. I'm excited about all that God is going to do for you. I'm excited about, I can't wait to partake in and what it is that God is going to birth through you. 2019, don't we serve an awesome God? I just come to tell you on tonight that you made it. You're still here. You're still standing. You're still holding on. And that everything that the enemy threw at you, it didn't work. No weapon that was formed against you, it didn't prosper. You made it over. So happy new year to everyone. And I'm excited about what God is going to do in this new year. I'm excited about what God is going to do for you in your family, in your ministries, in your businesses. Regardless of what is going on around us. Regardless of what we are hearing on the news, regardless of what is going on as it relates to certain, you know, job statuses and things of that nature, God has a plan for your life. God has an awesome plan. All of this is just a distraction. It's just a, a, a distraction to try to throw a boomerang into your new year to make you think that God is not going to do what he says he's going to do. But you got to be able to stand firm and say, devil, that's all you got. Because truly, that is really all he got. He got that, and not only does he have that, but if he can put it in your mind and begin to make you doubt, and to begin to make you doubt the promises of God for your life, then he's won. But how many of you know that the devil is a liar? He has been defeated and, and was defeated all the way back on Calvary when Jesus hung, bled, and died and rose again. Hallelujah. It was in the resurrection when he was defeated, actually, in the resurrection when Jesus rose again and said, you thought you killed me. Hallelujah. But see, I'm still here. So you got to be able to tell the enemy and, and to tell your circumstances and your situations that mm -mm, you thought that was going to take me out. <laughs> but I'm still here. I'm still standing. A brand new year. It's all in your perspective. It's how you perceive is how you speak because the Bible says death and life is in the power of the tongue and they that eat the fruit thereof. So you got to be able to start this year, start this season and speaking that thing. Speaking those things that are, that are not as if they were. You got to be able to speak those things, grab those things from the heavenlies and bring them to the earthly realm because the Bible says whatsoever you shall bind Peter told, and as going back to my book, I give you keys, the seven biblical principles that will unlock the doors to your success. When Jesus told Peter, I give you keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever you bind on earth, guess what? I am going to bound it in heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth, I am going to loose it in heaven for you, Peter, and not just for Peter, for all of us. See, God has a, has a great things in store for us. We just got to come to the realization and know that we know, that we know that we know, that we are who God says we are and that we can have what God says that we can have. That matter of fact, we already have it. According to the word, he said on earth as it is in heaven. So when you walk as if you're walking as if you walk in the earth as if you're in heaven, then that means that you've already shown God that I believe you. I believe that I already got it. I believe that I'm healed. I believe I'm delivered. I believe I'm set free. I believe that I'm wealthy. I believe that my children are saved. I believe you, God, that I'm whole in every area of my life. And so that's what God wants us to walk in in 2019. God wants to walk in wholeness. So this book, I give you keys, seven biblical principles that will unlock the doors to your success. I want you to go get this book. I give you keys. Then I want to talk to you guys about another book that I wrote. It's called When a Prophet Cries, Something Happens. I want 
talk about this in the context of forgiving, making this a new year to forgive, making this a new year to love, but not just this. This is not just all what this book is about either. This book also will enhance your understanding and give you the knowledge, give you the revelation of what it is that God has called you for in this earth. What is your purpose? So you would know what your purpose is. If it's not to be a prophet, it is to be God has ordained you to do something great in this world for you to do something great in the earthly realm. So when a prophet cries, something happens. Amen. Then my book, Misguided Affections, that I wrote, I want you guys to go get this book as well because this book is going to teach you about relationships. Different types of relationships, whether that's with a man or a woman, whether that's with a business partner, whether that's a regular friendship, you know, different type talks about the different types of love. It talks about the agape love. It talks about all types of love and what they mean and what they are. But this book is going to teach you to help you realize what love, true love is. What is love? Amen. What is infatuation? Amen. What is possessiveness? Huh? So all of those things, misguided affections. And then my latest release, my new release is Your Best Self Yet. So I want you guys to go get this book because in this 2019, I want you to walk in your best self yet and knowing that you could be your best self yet. And you being your best self yet is not predicated upon people's opinion because guess what? When God wants to bless you, he doesn't go to man and say, should I bless them? Should I bless this person? He swears by his own name. He don't confer with man and say, should I bless you? Or should I bless this person? Or should I bless that person? God said, I'm God. God all by myself. I swear by my own name. It's not by your works that I'm going to bless you. Amen. A lot of times we feel like if we can do this and we can do that, then we can get God's attention. And God said, no, I'm looking at your heart because you could do great works, but your heart could be evil. Just ask Cain. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because Cain thought he could do great works, but his heart wasn't right. And how do we know his heart wasn't right? He eventually killed his brother. So what was in his heart was hatred. So he was out trying to do great works to get God's attention, but his heart was evil. Amen? And so... Don't get caught up on thinking that you got to be a certain way to get God's attention. You got to do certain things to get God's attention and that you got to be a uh, uh, walk in the spirit of self-righteousness because God is not looking for self-righteousness. He's looking for a willing and able heart. He's looking for a heart that is surrendered unto him, meaning that, Lord, I can't do it without you. God, I'm just a mere man. God, I need your Holy Spirit. God, I need you to strengthen me because, God, I recognize. I understand and I confess that I need you. Hallelujah. For me to be able to overcome certain things in my life, I need to be strengthened. So not he doesn't want you walking in self-righteous as if you can't fall or as if uh, uh, um, you can't slip up because the Bible says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And so, but when we put our trust in Him and say, God, you go before me, you take my hand, you lead me, you guide me, then God said, Now I know that they know that they need me. Hallelujah. How many of you know God wants to know that you need Him? Hallelujah. God wants you to know that you need a savior. God wants you to know that it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by his spirit. That's why he says that I am a spirit and those who worship me got to worship me in spirit and in truth. And so to be your best self yet, you need help from the Lord. Amen. And so in this book, Your Best Self Yet, I talk about the self-discovery process. I talk about facing your fears. I talk about things that you need to do to climb certain mountains. You know, some mountains, uh, they're just not going to move on their own. Some mountains, you're going to have to look face, square, look square in the face and say, I see how big you are. I see how large you are. But devil, you a liar. You're going to get up out of my way. And if you don't move out of my way, I'm just going to climb up, climb on up and get to the other side of my promise to get my blessing and so we have to have that mindset we have to have a made up mind and say you may you may look big you may look like you can't be defeated but greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world and God that is with me is greater than a million people that are against me hallelujah let me tell you let me say it again I said God that is with you and me huh are greater than a million people
people or more than a million people who are against us. And so we have to be fortified in his spirit. Hallelujah. We got to be fortified in him and knowing that God is not like man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. I heard a psalm that says, who is this king of glory? Hallelujah. We serve the king of glory. Mm. Let me say that again. I said we serve the king of glory. He's strong and mighty. He's strong in battle. He's never, never lost the battle. Glory to God. And so whatever you're going through on today. Whatever Bible joke that's coming up against you, even in this new year, even starting in this new year, I want you to know that our God has never lost the battle. Put your faith with him. Align yourself with Jesus. Align yourself with the Lord and know that with him, you're unstoppable. With him, you're undefeated. With him, you can't be moved. With him, you're mighty. With him, you're awesome. With him, you're great. Hallelujah. With him, you're successful. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I want to encourage you and let you know that God holds all power in his hand. He got the whole world in his hand. That's what we used to sing. We used to sing, he got the whole wild world in his hand. And he does, my friends. He got the whole world in the palm of his hands. That's how great he is. That the whole world, hallelujah, he can fit the whole world in the palm of his hand. He don't have to confer with man to bless you. Amen. Praise God. Get this book, Your Best Self Yet. So I want you to get all four books. I give you keys. When a prophet cries, something happens. Misguided affections. And Your Best Self Yet. By going to Amazon.com. ZulonPress.com. BarnesandNobles.com. Hallelujah. AppleIbooks.com. Or you can go to Dolores.W-I-X-S-I-T-E forward slash Dr. D-T-H Ministries. Or email me at Dr. D-T-H Ministries at gmail.com. Or simply give me a call. 240-676-3214. Hallelujah. I'm excited about it. And one more email that you can email for the books. D-T-H at Virtue Consulting co.com glory to his name so i can't let you go or can't stop on about the products by giving you this free bottle of my anointing oil my matthew 10 1 oil you and it says that and when he had called unto him his 12 disciples he had given them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manners of sickness and disease let this, get this bottle of anointing on you. Anoint yourself from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Anoint your children. Anoint your pillowcases. Anoint your soles of your feet. Anoint your shoes. Anoint your wife. Anoint your husband. Hallelujah. Anoint yourself. And watch God write out those. According to Matthew 10, 1, unclean spirits. Huh? And heal all manners of your sickness and um, your disease. Amen. And so let's begin. I want to start out by telling you that God loves you. I want to start out by telling you that you are the apple of God's eye. I want to start out by telling you that God has a great and mighty plan for your life. Do you believe on today? Do you believe that God has a plan for your life? Do you believe that God loves you? Do you believe that God wants only the best for you? Amen. Because that's what he does. He's a loving father. He doesn't plan to uh, see you go through struggle. He doesn't plan to see you go and be in distress. He doesn't plan to see you ha in having heartbreaks and heartaches. That's not his plan for your life. But his plan for your life, according to Jeremiah 29, 11, is for you to have great success, for you to have, for him to take you to your expected end. Huh? He said he knows the plans that he has for you. He has great plans for you. He has awesome plans for you. Guess what? To take you to the expected end. To your expected end. Because see my friends, he already know your end. Amen. We serve a God who knows the ending from the beginning.
understanding. We serve a God who is all-knowing. We serve a God that is all-powerful. We serve a God is who is um, present, and he's present all over the place, all over the world. And man, not only does he hold the world, the whole wild world in his hands, but he can be everywhere in the whole wild world at the very same time. We serve a God who could be in Africa, who could be in the United States, who could be in Europe, who can be in Asia. Guess what, my friends? All at the same time. So you don't have to wait your turn to get what it is that God wants to give you. You don't have to be, you don't have to wait until he do what he does in America. You don't have to wait to do until he does what he does in Europe. You don't have to wait until he does what he does in Africa or Asia. Guess what? He can bless each and every one of us all. Good God Almighty. I said he can bless each and every one of us all at the same time. And in saying that, I just want you to know that the right now word for you on tonight is simply you are chosen. You are chosen to do great things. You are chosen to walk in abundance. You are chosen to be wealthy. You are chosen to succeed. You are chosen to excel. What do I mean by chosen? What is the definition of chosen? Chosen means that you have been favored. You have been elected. That God has divinely favored you to do something great, to do something wonderful. And even all alone by itself, you're just good. You're just awesome like that. God has chosen you to do a great work. The Bible says that many are called, but few are chosen. I want you to know on tonight that you are the few. You are the few that have been chosen. What? distinguishes the call from the chosen. What distinguishes the call from the chosen is that many are called, meaning that many will go out and say that they're going to do it. Many will go out and say that they will even, some of them will even preach. Some of them will even, you know, prophesy. Some of them will even um, teach, but their hearts are wicked. So that's the difference between the one who is called and the one that is chosen. The one that is chosen in their heart they say, God, your will, your way. And let me just say this. Being chosen doesn't mean you're not going to make a mistake. Being chosen doesn't mean you're not going to fall down sometimes. Being chosen doesn't mean that you're not going to uh, 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 make that you're not going to waver out of his will. Being chosen just simply means that my heart is in the hands of God and that I know that I know that I know that I know that I know. That I love myself some God. And that at the end of the day. Huh? At the end of the day. That God is my all. And my all. Amen. And so when God chooses you. He chooses you for a specific task. He chooses you for a, a, a certain assignment. He chooses you to do something great. Hallelujah. All for his glory. And the many that are called. Huh? Some of them answer, but they don't, they go astray and don't come back. Those are the call, huh? Many are called who some of them don't answer at all, but they have been called, uh-huh. But the chosen, the few are the ones who say, yes, Lord, yes to your will, not just out of my mouth service, but my heart service. I'm going to do this thing in my heart. Hallelujah. And let me just say this. Being chosen doesn't mean that you just jump and skip and say, I'm doing it right now. Uh-uh. Chosen for a task, but don't walk in it until years later. Just ask David. David was anointed. God chose David to be king. He was anointed as a young boy, but he didn't get onto the, he didn't walk into his purpose until many years later because he had to be prepared. So I want to talk to the ones who are chosen today and feel like you're defeated and feel like what is going on and feel like, God, I know you called me, called me, not just called me, but you chose me, not just chose me, but you glorified me. God, you called me, you justified me and you glorified me. What is going on? Hallelujah. I just simply came to tell you on tonight to let you know that God didn't make a mistake. You are chosen. Everybody that's listening to this show on tonight, you're chosen. I'm not talking to the called. I'm talking to the chosen. You're chosen. And you may feel like you're not chosen because maybe you're going through something. Maybe you're like, God, what is going on? Huh? Just ask David.
gave it. David was anointed. Being chosen doesn't mean everything's going to go good in your life. It doesn't mean that all, um, all you're going to experience only good things. Being chosen, to be honest with you, my friends, let me just be honest with you on tonight. Being chosen means that you're going to go through some stuff. You're going to be rejected. Just ask Joseph, huh? He was rejected of his brothers. Just ask David, huh? His daddy rejected him. Hallelujah. Just ask the prophet Elisha. And I want to do a compare and contrast for some of you who are in ministry today. Hallelujah. You may feel like I'm in ministry. And they're not opening up doors. People are not opening up doors for me fast enough. People are not helping me fast enough. Let me tell you that their disregard for the gifted in you. Hallelujah. Does not negate the fact that God chose you. It only, uh-huh. <laughs> yes, let me tell that to you one more time. Them not. Opening up doors for you, hallelujah, does not negate the fact that God has chosen you for such a time as this. God has chosen you. God has chosen you. God has called you. God has justified you. And God has glorified you for just a time and a season as this. This is your season. I want you to know that this is your season. I want you to know that this is your time. I want you to know this is your Cairo's moment to walk in what God has for you. But you cannot get disembogulated on who is speaking to you and who is not speaking to you and who has rejected you and who has did you this way. You got to be able to know that you know that you know that you know that you know that I am a chosen priesthood. I am a royal priesthood. I am a chosen generation. I am who God has said, who says I am. Men may not be able to see it, but I declare and I decree that I am a hero and not a zero. I declare and I decree that I'm the lender and I'm not the borrower. That I declare and I decree that I'm on top and I am not at the bottom. Hallelujah. I come to tell you on tonight, my friends, and to let you know that you are chosen. I want to talk a little bit about the prophet Elisha and the sons of the prophet. You see, the sons of the prophet were the called. Amen. But the prophet Elisha, guess what? He was chosen. Huh? The difference is that the, the sons of the prophet, again, this is in the book of Kings. You can go and read it in the book of Kings. The sons of the prophets were in the school of the prophets. And they, and, and they were studying and, and, and they were trying to learn the heart of God and, 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 and through, through studying and things of that nature. And then you have the prophet Elisha, who God chose through the prophet Elijah uh -huh, to succeed the prophet Elijah. God told the prophet Elijah, I want you to go and anoint the Elisha, the son of Nun, in your stead. Meaning that he's going to succeed you. One day. So I want you to go and anoint him. Uh-huh. Because I've chosen him. Uh-huh. I want you to go and anoint the one that I chose. Don't go to that school. Don't go to that school and, and, and anoint one of those that's been called. Uh-huh. Just because they in school don't mean that they, they, they've been chosen by God. Uh-huh. Just because they got more degrees than you don't mean that God chose them. Uh-huh. Just because they got more money than you don't mean that they've been chosen. Uh-huh. Just because. Just because they got men that's flocking to them don't mean God has chosen them. So he told the prophet Elijah, don't get caught up on the people that look like I've chosen them. <clears throat> I want you to follow my instructions, Elijah. And I want you to go and I want you to anoint the one that I chose. The one that I'm anointed. Uh-huh. To take your place. Glory to God. And so let me tell you something. What you experience in my friends, those of you who, are, who have prophetic calling so in your life, who are working in ministry, who are building businesses and you can't get help and you can't get support, those people are walking around with the spirit of the sons, the, the sons of the prophets. Huh? Uh-huh. On them. Meaning that. And if you read the story, you will see. Let me give you a little bit back, my own. They were jealous of Elisha. They mocked Elisha. Uh-huh. They were jealous because they knew that Elisha was the chosen one. They mocked him because he served Elijah. They mocked him because he put poor water on his feet and water on his hands. But let me tell you something. They may be mocking you because you've been faithful. They may be mocking you because they're trying to figure out you've been in.
in this thing for so many years and you still ain't get a breakthrough. They may be mocking you saying, where is your God? They may be mocking you saying, what is going on? Them, they praising the Lord and the children acting like the, the demons. They may be mocking you saying, uh, she, she or he following that leader. What is going on? I want you to know on tonight, God knows what he's doing. That God has a plan and he's preparing you. And a lot of people don't understand it. It is not for them to understand. It's for you to know. Huh? That you are chosen. And you are chosen to do great things. You're chosen to do marvelous things. You're chosen. And let me tell you something. At the end of the day, if you read that story, Elisha got his double portion. Elijah got what it was that he was supposed to have. By being obedient to God, no matter how long it took, he was obedient to God all the way until he got all the way to the end. And the Bible says he did greater works than his master. He did greater works than his mentor. Glory to God. He did greater miracles. So the sons of the prophet at the end of the day had to submit to Elisha's leadership. So those who are mocking you, I declare and I decree on today that those who are mocking you will have to bow to you. I declare and I decree on today that God is going to make you the head and not the tail. I declare and I decree today that he's going to make your enemies your footstool. Hold on. Hold your head up high. Keep praying. Keep preaching. Keep teaching. Ha uh ha. -huh. Keep teaching the word. Keep studying the word. Keep praying for your children. Keep anointing your children. Keep walking in faith and believing that God can't lie. He shall not lie. He will not lie. What God says, he's going to do it. Glory to his name. And watch God change things. Uh -huh. Watch God change things in your life. Watch God put you on a road of wealth. Watch God put you on a road of discovery. Discovering the gifts inside of you. Discovering things that was in you that you didn't know that was inside of you. Discovering the gifts even in your children. Hallelujah. Discovering the gifts, the talents, and the skills and abilities that were in you all along. Uh -huh. Sometimes God take us through a road just so that we can discover who we are. I just come to simply tell you on tonight, my friend, you are chosen. You're chosen. Don't be persuaded. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Don't look at somebody else's grass because there's no green on the other side, but it may be fake. Uh-huh. They may be wet buying grass. Uh-huh. And you're growing yours. Uh, it's easy to buy than to sit and grow. Mm -hmm. But when you grow, you appreciate it more. When you allow yourself to grow and to be cultivated uh -huh, and pressed like the olive. When you come out, you're going to come out through the fire like per gold. I simply came to tell you on tonight that you are chosen. Hold your head up high. You chosen vessel of God. You royal priesthood. You mighty woman of God. You great king. You are God's chosen vessel. You've been listening to The Right Now Word. God bless you and have a good night. Thank you for listening to The Right Now Word. If you are listening and you have not accepted Jesus Christ in your life, I submit to you that he loves you so much. He wants to come into your heart. If you will go to Romans 10 now, the Bible says that if you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then my friend, you will be saved. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Right Now Word.